everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on Rashpixel.fm. I'm Pete Wright, and I am here with the studious Nikki Kinzer. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very studious, you know, especially with my glasses. I look so smart. You do. You look like a librarian. <laughs> yes. Uh, we, we're we talking about uh, studying smarter. Five tips for studying smarter this week. This is on the heels of our, our studying tools uh, uh, episode last week. If you haven't heard that, go back and listen to that. Get some good ideas for hardware and, and tools that you can use. Then come back and listen to this one to talk about the uh, strategies for actually studying smarter, I think. Right? Right. All right. So but before we dig into that... You need to head over to TakeControlADHD.com. You need to get to know us a little bit better. You can uh, listen to the show right there on the website or subscribe to our mailing list right there on the homepage. Get an email with the latest episode each week. Connect with us on Twitter or Facebook at TakeControlADHD and call us and leave us a voicemail at 503-664-4ADD. We'd love to hear from you. It's ADHD Awareness Month. It is, and I want to talk about it. And you see that on my notes. That's why you said that. No, did no, you know it was? It's, it's because I have an alert on my calendar. It says ADHD you Awareness Month. No, I'm lying to you right now. I did I see it in say. your notes. It okay. says, don't forget to mention ADHD Awareness Month. And now I want to know what's what What should I be aware of? Because I'm aware of it every day. <laughs> You're aware of everything. I just noticed my camera was still on. Did you see me? Yes, I, been, I was watching you making notes. <laughs> it was funny. really funny to watch you say, to watch you say, ha, ha. That's funny. And sort of laugh at my joke because when I can see you, I can tell you're not really laughing at my jokes. I was laughing at your jokes, but you probably also saw I was doing like two things at once. Well, I was you trying weren't to copy and paste some or copy and paste something and then I was still listening to you and Well, at least you weren't picking your nose or something really no. bad. That's, no, I know, yeah. right? That would have been bad. All right. All right. So talk about ADHD Awareness Month. You you can't see me. Okay. Sorry. All right. Yes. uh, October is ADHD Awareness Month. And it's just something I wanted to mention very quickly. Um, So for people who follow Chad and Ada and some of these ADD resources, if you have them on on your Facebook, you're going to see a lot of this popping up in your feeds um, about ADHD Awareness Month. And it's just an opportunity like, you know, any other month. I mean, I don't want you to just not be aware of ADHD only in October. Because my goodness, thank you. (laughs) I, I can't tell you how much I look forward to November. I, because yeah, then right? I don't have to be aware of it anymore. You don't have to be aware. But it's just one of those things to help other people get more educated around it. Um, and there's just lots of articles. And, you know, I I like a lot of different pages. And so I'm seeing stuff in my feed all the time about uh, great tips and strategies and people's stories and things like that. So just want people to be aware of it. Um, certainly check out my Facebook and, and my Twitter and, and my blog um, this month as well, because I'll be sharing in that um, lots of information. And uh, I think the key is that to, 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 for you to look at it, read it, but then to share it and give it to loved ones and people that may, um, you know, benefit from understanding this a little bit better. So that's what it is. I love it. And, yeah. and don't forget to subscribe to the blog. And, you know, I don't read your posts before you post them. And now that I subscribe to the blog, I read them in my email. And it turns out it's really great. Oh, thank you. I love getting my little Nikki emails from the blog. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I, I, I appreciate that because, you know, I, I really have um, put a focus on the blog in the last couple of months and, and hope to continue doing that uh, going into next year. You can really, I- really tell. Yeah, yeah, I really enjoy it. So I'm glad that you picked up on that and hopefully other other people will too. And I and I always like I've said before, I try to um have a, at least one of the posts kind of theme or play off of our podcast. So um you know, whatever we're talking about that week, y- you know, you pretty much can guarantee I shouldn't I shouldn't I mean, you don't get your money back cuz it's free. So <laughs> I do my best. <laughs> <laughs> to at least have one post that that week that has something to do with what we've already talked about or um, additional information. Just say it's worth vastly more than you pay for it. <laughs> That's right. It is an incredible value. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah. All right. So studying smarter. Let's talk about studying smarter. What do you mean by that? Yeah. Well, I have five different tips on, um, you know, really, well, it's what it means, studying smarter, just being more efficient with your time and um, not being so frustrated at the end of a two hour period of time where you were supposed to be studying and and maybe you didn't get as much done as you wanted to. How did you study in college? (laughs) Um, How? Yeah. Like like what was your, would you, if you were to describe your study habits, how would you describe them briefly? 
I can tell you that like the first year of college was really difficult for me because I had a hard time taking notes. Um, I, I was taking too many notes or I was making too many, um, well, yeah, I was taking too many notes and, and too much detail. And so, you know, I would get it written down and then I'd miss a, a portion of what the professor said because I was writing down what she just, or he said, you know, two minutes ago. So it was like, there was all these gaps all the time, right? Because I was always trying to catch up a little bit. And so one of the first things I learned very quickly is that I don't have to write every single thing down that the person is saying. Um and so I had to learn to adapt to that, to, okay, what's the most important key point here? Or what's the key point that I'm going to want to go back to because I don't understand it. But if I do understand it and I don't need to go back to it, don't write it down. And and that's kind of, you know, that was the first thing I learned. But I studied with people. Um, you know, I, I uh, always studied with people. I mean, I guess because I always lived with people, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. um, if you were in the dorm, then we would study either in our rooms with other people or we would study in the living room area or, you know, the common areas. Um, I was in a sorority for two years, so I always studied with people when I lived in the sorority. And then my senior year, I lived with four girls in an apartment off campus. And um, so there are always people around me, which I think for whatever reason, it helped me stay focused if I wasn't by myself. Um, you know, I think like every student, I remember cramming a little bit and doing, you know, not all nighters because I need sleep. I can't like function even as a 20 or I guess I wasn't 20. Yeah, I was 20 when I was in college. Um, even as an 18, 19, 20, 21 year old, I couldn't have no sleep and then go to school the next day. Like I had to always sleep, but I could, I I would kind of manage my time of, okay, I'm going to study from 10 to 12 and then I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to get up at six and I'm going to study from six to eight and then classes at nine. You Mm -hmm, know what I mean? mm -hmm. Like I kind of, I I definitely scheduled when I was going to study and, um, how, what that was going to look like. Is that, it, does that answer your question? Well, yeah. I mean, I was just, I'm just trying to reflect on how things have changed. And I, you know, I was very much, um, it was very similar. I was very much a crammer and I wasn't very well organized. I really struggled with that. And so when I did study, I studied for really long stretches, usually right the night before something was due or some exam was going to happen or something. And, and so I would put, you know, four or five, six hours late into the middle of the night and I would just pound giant tumblers full of of coke and coffee and i would just drink engage so much caffeine and sugar into my system that would keep me awake but you know when they talk about in, in psychology about state dependent memory that is that is a big deal <laughs> That yeah. I think really impacts you as a student. If you study, I I am such a believer. If you study and you're jacked up on substances, uh, then getting into the test and feeling refreshed and not having you know any of those substances will may may help you not perform quite as well as you need to perform, whether you studied a lot or not. And so I think it's interesting as we're talking about studying smarter. A lot of these tips are things that we we have learned over the years that uh, the way you and I studied in college wasn't the best, most efficient way to study. And I, I had no system. Nobody ever taught me how to study. Oh, right, I was no. just flying completely blind. I made it up and I thought if I just stare at my notes long enough, page after page, I'll get it. And, right. uh, and, and I think it's interesting when you look back and think, gosh, I never had any sense of the way my physiology affected my psychology and my, my ability to, to study and focus. So anyway. Well, and I just remember always getting to a point that, and it was always sometime in the night before a test. And so, you know, it was probably getting into the wee hours and I would just get to the point where, okay, you know what, if I don't know it now, I'm not going to know it. Yes. And so I would just sort of like throw in the towel, like, okay, I'm done because I, I can't, I'm, I just know I'm not going to get this. Even if I keep studying right now, right. it's not going to help. So I'm, I'm just done. And what's interesting know? about that um, is you're probably right. You're probably right. But it's not because you're necessarily done. It's because you didn't have a good strategy leading up to that point. <laughs> right. You know, and, and you know, yeah. what's funny is I think we look at that feeling. I totally remember that feeling. I, I used to think of that, you know, as the reward you know, mm-hmm. like that was the little dopamine w- rush, that little bit of liberation that said, okay, I'm finished. I can right. go relax my brain now. And really, uh, you know, and we'll talk about this in a, in a moment, really, I should have been shooting for that little dopamine rush of release intermittently over the, you know, preceding three or four days, uh, right. in smaller, smaller, uh, 
doses. Anyway. Yeah. And, and you know what? I didn't, I mean, this is strange. I, I know I drank soda when I was there, when I was in college, but I never drank coffee. In fact, I never drank coffee until like later in life. It was I kids. Oh my goodness. They gave, it was just always on the, on tap Any, yeah, anytime, day or night, you could walk up and fill up your, your tumbler and with, you know, because there was a soda machine always open to students yeah, 24 right. hours a day in the study area. Yeah. It's awful. It was uh, just it is. awful. It is crazy. Okay. All right. First so, tip. um, well, actually before I even go into the first tip, I, this was great timing because I had, um, one of my clients ask a question and so I'm going to start with that, I think first, okay. if that's okay. Yeah. And then we can kind of go into the tips and how it, 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 the tips actually help her, her question too. Um, she gets sleepy when she reads. And so, she, and, and so her question was, you know, how, any strategies, any thoughts, I, I read, I get tired, but I have no problem moving on to the next activity and then I'm fine. You know, well, it's the sleeping or I'm sorry, it's the reading that's making her tired. That physical activity of reading is making her tired. And I understand that. Believe me, I understand that. Um, I read one page and I go to bed. So, so but she's, I wonder, are you, you're reading in bed, right? When right. So yeah. yeah. Or even in the car or whatever. I always while get tired you're, while, while you're I driving. Read. You yeah, read well, a lot yeah. while you're driving. <laughs> And I text message. And you text and, and this, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, surpri- it's really a surprise It's that, amazing, that yeah. I'm still here. It really, yeah. you, you're brave. <laughs> I know. I'm brave and stupid. You're brave and stupid. Uh, no, that is not true, Pete Wright. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I just, I, I do get physically tired when I'm reading. It's yeah. just something that happens. And so... Um, and that's kind of what sounds to me like hap- that, you know, the same thing is happening to her. And so I wanted to just sort of, um, talk about the strategies that I gave to her about the sleeping thing. And then we can talk about these other strategies that, um, kind of cross over. Oh, good. Yeah. All right. So basically what I, the, the first suggestion that I had for her was to only read for 10 or 15 minutes at a time. So instead of actually reading, and, and I know it's easy to do this because I did this and I'm sure you did too. I'm going to spend two hours reading this chapter, you know, or I'm going to spend two hours reading for this class. Disaster. And it just doesn't set you up for success. So yes, it is going to take you longer doing it the way that I'm going to suggest. There's no doubt about it. It will take you longer. But the goal is that we hope that it will um, keep you not so frustrated and actually help you retain the information more. So I would say for 10 minutes, read as much as you can for 10 minutes and then stop and then take a break. Anybody can read for 10 minutes without falling asleep especially if you go into the intention of knowing you're only going to be reading for 10 minutes. You go into the intention thinking you're going to read for 60 and it changes the dynamics of the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because then, um, you're, then you're thinking, well, I better get comfortable. And, and as soon yeah. as you start getting comfortable, then you start relaxing into sleep. I would, I would, can I add something to that? Or do you yeah. want to finish your thought? I have, a, I have an addition. Yeah, I, I think there is something really important that ties to, again, to this physiology piece. And if you, if you're really studying, if you have a text, I I will never forget. I had the most boring political science textbook. Um, it was was like liberal thought in America or something. It was, it was just, just incredibly dense. Uh, and I couldn't make it through it. I just, I would fall asleep no matter what, but I found if I stood up and moved to a different, to a different location, like I would read a passage uh, you know, um, on a, a particular political thinker for 10 minutes, standing in the corner of a very strange room of a room where you would not normally, um, normally stand <laughs> and read, but you're standing up, standing in the corner and read for 10 minutes. And then the next time you then take a break. And then the next time you read, go to a different location. And what you're doing, your brain is associating. It's yeah. It's associating the content you're reading with the location that you're standing. And so when it yeah. comes time to recall, you then can go, you can walk through the, the physical location where you were reading and find that that triggers what you were reading. What you were reading. It, That's a great idea. It really is. It's it's a wonderful thing. And when I was in college, when I when I was a senior, I finally started getting good at this. I would do things like I would stand on a table and read for five minutes. And oh then when gosh. I'm taking an exam on that material, I think, okay, now what was I reading when I was standing on the table? Oh yeah, I remember that. I have this that. image of you in your hoodie. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> standing big hoodie on fan. tables, yep. going in like you know the the corner, and everybody's like, "What's that strange guy doing over there yes. reading his textbook?" Yeah. But the, the <laughs> yeah, real trick that's is. A great 
is, is standing up and associating <laughs> movement with reading because then you're conditioning yourself. Right now, most of us, I think, are conditioned when we read, when we hear read, we read at bedtime or we read to relax or we read. That's not what you want to do. You really want to engage and engaging means getting physical with the material. I really believe that. Well, and that, yeah, and actually that ties into what I, you know, what I told her next to do. Um, it, well, a couple things. One is not to lay in your bed and read. Oh, you know, it, worst, don't yeah. do that. Don't lay on the couch or sit in a really comfortable chair. If 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 you know that the, especially if the material is not interesting to you and it's going to be difficult getting through, sit at a desk. Sit at uh, sit at the table. Do what Pete's rec- you know, what, what you're recommending. Move around into different areas, and I also recommend the standing pe- the portion of it too. Yeah. Stand and pace back and forth. Highlight as you're reading, um, because all of this stuff makes it more active right. for you. Right. And like what you're saying, you retain it and you remember where you were. But it just uh, it, it also helps you not be tired. If you're standing up, pacing back and forth, you're not going to be falling asleep. Versus if you're like laying in bed trying to read this, you're going to fall sleep absolutely and drink water yes i think hydration is really important not soda not coffee oh, don't do what pete Wright does don't let my life serve <laughs> as a warning to others drink water please yes yeah. Um, and then my last suggestion for her, which is also going to go into what I'm going to talk about here in just a couple minutes is to do the reading piece, um, when she has the most energy. So if she is most energetic, uh, in the evening or afternoon, um, then let her be that, let that be the time where she reads and let the writing work and the, you know, the other busier work be at the times where she's really tired. So we want to kind of match that energy level with the task that, uh, is a little bit more difficult to do or, you know, makes you sleepy, um, midday, you know, or this particular, um, client works out in the morning. And so maybe she does some reading right after she worked out, maybe get that first 10 minutes in right after she's done, Mm -hmm. um, exercising and, and see if that makes a difference. So, um, that's what I have for that. If you're starting to get kind of tired, you know, reading those textbooks that are, they're dense. Can be, they're, they're awful. So sometimes. dense. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So finding the right place to study is my first tap or first tap. Your first tap. Are you yeah. tapping? That's weird. I put like study and steps together and got <laughs> tap. <First> tap. <laughs> Okay. So anyway, uh, finding the right place to study. Um, did you go to the library a lot when you studied? I did. Yeah. 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 I did sometimes. Um, and I think that for, for people, it just depends. And this is what you want to play around with a little bit, uh, especially if you're new to school or you, uh, have taken a long break from school and, um, you're, you're going back, you may not know where the right place to, to study for you is yet. So we want to kind of play around with that. It could be the library. It could be a coffee shop. It could be completely by yourself, you know, in a room with doors around it. And nobody can, can, you know, nobody can get in. I don't know what that looks like for you. Um, but that's that is what you got to find out. What is the the best place for you where you're going to have the least amount of distractions, um, where you can be the most productive, get the most done, um, and is convenient for you? Because even if the library may be the best place for you to study, then figure out how to work that into your schedule so it's convenient. You don't want to be sitting in your dorm room when that's an hour away, or not an hour away, but a mile away that you have to walk to. And um you know, it's nine o'clock at night. You're not going to do that. So maybe if you went to the library earlier in the day, uh, in between classes, you would have gotten more done. You know what I mean? Sure, you just yeah. want to think things yeah. through a little bit more. Well, and I think we have so many great tools to understand ourselves and our schedules and track our, you know, to track how busy we are and keep track of the openings, uh, in our own schedules than we did, uh, you know, when you and I were first doing this. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm seeing more of my students that are generally just more organized in terms of their time. And it may be because because their their systems are stretched because they are you know maybe they're working more uh, they are uh, you know juggling families they're doing things because they're you know I'm, I'm seeing more and more non-traditional students coming through the classroom and I think they're just wiser about that but I think that's really one of the most important things is understand yourself and your own time um, mm-hmm. and and watch for those windows when you can you know when you can match studying what content works best for these little windows of time that will crop up uh, I think that's a really important skill and muscle. Yeah. Well, and then the second tip is, is what we've already talked about. And that is 
doing that hard stuff when you're feeling more energized. So again, it ties into that time management, looking at those um, gaps in your schedule where, okay, this would be a really good time for me to, to tackle this book sure. for 10 or 15 minutes. So scheduling study time at your peak, when do you feel your best? When do you feel most energized? Um, and if you can, if you're not in class or working, study your, your schedule, your study sessions during those times. Um, and you know, it, it, it's also easier to push through those subjects that, that are boring and that, but we have to take yeah. to make sure that we do it during the times that we feel the best. So absolutely taking breaks is my third tip tip. I keep wanting to say tape or tap I, or tip. I don't tip, 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 tip. It's third a tip. tip. It's a tip. It's a suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. I'm tongue tied. Uh, taking breaks, Pete, is uh, important, right? This is, th- to- this is so, this is, this is the biggest one, the biggest lesson. Like this right here is why I would be such a fantastic student today. Right. If because I could I- only do it again. I know. I totally feel you because I I would say that out of all of these tips, this is probably the one that I really um, did poorly at, Yeah. (laughs) you know, because I would, I would schedule that time like, okay, I'm, you know, six to 10. I just remember always thinking in hours, you know, six to 10, I'm going to study for this class. And then from 10 to 12, I'm going to study from this class and whatever it was, it was always this, you know, these big, huge, huge chunks of time. And, you know, I don't remember taking breaks. Maybe I did, but uh, I really don't remember taking many breaks. I'm with you. So, it certainly was not a seminal part of my study experience. No. And that is why, I, you know, I think for this particular subject, studying smarter, we want to take those breaks. We want to study for 30 minutes. We want to then take a 10-minute break. Um, you know, this is going to help you stay focused. It's going to help you with your energy. Um, a great thing to do on your break is to walk around, get some exercise, um, stretch a little bit, get some water. What we want to avoid is is checking Facebook, checking your email, calling a friend. Um, we really do want to stay away from the, the rabbit holes that could take you away from going back to the study period. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, you, you want to, you want to stay away from that stuff, but, um, and you can certainly play around with the time frame. I'm saying 30 minutes now. Um, but you know, if you, if you find a class that you love and, Maybe it's a little bit longer than 30 minutes, but the, the point is don't go longer than an hour. Don't you think? I oh, mean, really... I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't touch an hour. I was going to say 30 minutes is sort of at the, the at long max. end. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's where these air, these things like, uh, the, the Pomodoro technique works so well, you know, oh, because, right. for, because it's an odd time. And we've talked about the Pomodoro technique in the past on the show, but it's, uh, you know, and you can search for it in our archives or, or look for uh, Pomodoro technique on the web. It, it is, it, it allows you to think in terms of these little blocks box and of 25 minutes and then, you know, your break. Um, and because it's kind of an odd time, it, it, again, it plays with your general expectation of, you know, time slots of a half hour and an hour. It, it, it actually helps you, I think, move through more material faster. We, we think of, and I, I've often said this, you know, the college experience, higher ed in general is a marathon, not a sprint. But when it comes to studying, you want to think in terms of sprints, little blocks of time work really hard high energy for 15 minutes for 24 minutes and then rest then take a break that that's how you're going to build the studying muscle it's how you're going to keep your brain engaged it's how you're going to to um, keep this keep the material in your head where it counts right absolutely very good um we've already talked about this but i'm going to say it again because it's my Point number four is staying active while studying. So, you know, it's that standing up, walking around, pacing back and forth, using a highlighter. Um, I also find that a lot of my students do really well with handwriting notes. Um, so they're reading a chapter and then they handwrite the notes that they're getting off of that chapter. They may not need the notes for anything else, but just that, that simple fact that I'm reading it and now I'm taking my hand to this pen and then I'm putting the pen on the paper and putting what I just read onto this piece of paper. There's this connection there that is like magical for some students. And so, um, again, that's what that, what that's doing for you, right? Is keeping that studying active. 
Yeah, um, yeah. You know, I I'm gonna I I will embrace and extend that. And I know I've mentioned this on the show before too. I I have uh, over the last I guess year and a half, two years maybe, been really enamored by Mike Rowe's um, uh, sketch notes, and and he has done so much to teach people how to be really really active note takers and to draw their notes, to draw the images, to change the way you look at, at words and turn them into little pictures and icons and symbols that'll help you remember them. And so heading up to, uh, I'll put a link for sketch notes. He has a book, the sketch note workbook and the sketch note handbook that teach you how to draw simple shapes that will help you really engage these different areas of your brain as you take notes. I, it's oh, enormously cool. helpful for me and I, I just love it. So, yeah, that's great. Yeah. And that'll be in the show notes, Yeah, I'll right? put that in the show notes. Okay. Now, my last tip, I did really great at. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and, and, I, and I mentioned this at the beginning of the show. I always had study partners. And, and I recommend this for folks with ADHD is have a partner. And we've talked about bo- uh, body doubling before in the yeah. past with organizing. And it's the same thing as um, – or it's the same kind of concept with with studying is that just having somebody in the room with you who's also studying or who's in your class with you who can, um, you know, again, actively study with you. You guys are talking about the information. You're um, going over questions and, you know, they may know something you don't, you know, something they don't. Um, all of that stuff is so good. And so having somebody um, to, to kind of go and, and study with and practice these things with, um, are really, you know, it's going to help you, especially if you're, um, a verbal processor, you know, being able to talk this information out to somebody is, is really helpful. Absolutely Um, agree with that. And yeah, I just that. Don't find people that are going to distract you. (laughs) Well, that was my mistake. You don't want to. Exactly. I mean, you'd certainly want to be serious about it. And, um, and, you know, depending on how close you are with the person, which I'm assuming if you're studying with them, you're friends. Um, it's don't be ashamed or feel bad by telling them, Hey, I got to make sure my ADHD doesn't get in the way today because I got to really focus on this. So help me do that. If you can, Mm -hmm. you know, if you notice I'm wandering or I'm not paying attention, you know, ask me, you know, what are you doing? Are you, you, are you, you know, focusing? Do you need something? Um, and have them be a partner with you. And, and I think that you might find that to be really beneficial. Absolutely agree. Um, okay. So the, the very last thing I want to just say is that, you know, school has started. We are definitely in to fall. Um, it's cold, it's getting colder. Um, and I know that a couple shows back, I was talking about how it's really helpful if you're going to hire a coach for you to talk to me before you start school. But it's never too late to hire a coach. Never, ever, ever too late. So even if you start getting into the term and you're you're thinking, okay, man, it would be really nice to have a partner here with me, a coach with me to help me with this stuff. Um, check out my website. Check out the services for college students um, because I take college students throughout the whole year, not just in August or September. So. I, that is a great suggestion. Subscribe to the podcast and the blog. If you're listening to this on the website, make sure you start getting a taste of these resources that Nikki puts out, uh, every week, uh, and, and get an idea for the kinds of stuff you can learn. It, it is so valuable to have the one-on-one uh, relationship. Absolutely. Huge. And next week in the blog, um, I felt like that was an advertisement and next week, <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm going to have tips on how to prepare for, um, the big, t- big tests, you know, exams, whether that's a final midterm, whatever, but, um, some different tips on how to prepare for those will be in the blog this week. Excellent. Uh, and probably maybe just going into the first round of, uh, of early tests, midterms, big tests, and yeah. quizzes, midterms, things like that. That'll be good. It good timing. Will be. Yep. All right. I think think that's it. I think we're done. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening and downloading and subscribing to the show. We appreciate your time and attention, especially your attention. Uh, If you haven't done so, we deeply appreciate those of you who head over to iTunes and click on the show. Look for the show there and click on reviews and leave us a five-star review. It really is the best way to ensure that other people will be able to to find the show when they are seeking out ADHD support. So please help help others. Help us. We appreciate it. very, very deeply. Thanks so much, everybody. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll catch you next week on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast.